as you can see we, we've now committed the bass and all the drums to audio which has uh, basically saved our processor from collapse yeah it, it also seems sometimes that a heavy heavily loaded compressor affects the audio in a small way um, you can if you've got good monitors or on your headphones you can sometimes hear the audio almost struggling on play, playback and almost giving the impression of it almost breaking up in a very subtle way and once it's bounced it often sounds better for whatever reason possibly something to do with word clock uh, not bothered but it does it does sound better uh, when it's been bounced one thing you should note here is how we've kept the drums on individual audio channels and that we haven't bounced them all down as one and more specifically how we've also bounced the bass down in two parts now I mentioned this earlier the reason is that one channel holds the low end information and the other channel holds the high end raspiness basically we've done it like this for when it comes to mix down it allows us to adjust the bass end and the raspiness as, as two individual elements of the mix which we'll probably need to, to do at mix down. The more observant of you have probably have also noticed that uh, we've changed the names of some of the drums after bouncing down. I need to stress here that we haven't actually changed any of the timbres or any of the rhythms they're still exactly as they were in session two. All we've done is upon bouncing down we've decided to name them more appropriately. Um, we believe that some of the tambourines sounded more like shakers and this is simply to help us when we come to the mix down stage. Now with the drums and bass down you need to do what I consider the most important aspect of production and that's listen to how they work together. Listen to this now. Now we can hear the two elements here, the drums and the bass, working together harmoniously. Uh, they're each complementing one another and creating a defining groove and pattern. I suppose the big question is, can you feel it? This is absolutely essential. The bottom end has to work and it has to work well together now. You can never leave it until the mixing stage because by that time you think I'll swamp it in effects and EQ in the hope that I'll get something from it all. The point is, if it doesn't work now, you have to go back and do it again. Whether this means reprogramming the drums, reprogramming the bass, or starting again from scratch. If you accept anything less at this stage, it's a recipe for disaster. I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Just as you wouldn't expect a building to stand on dodgy foundations, you can't possibly expect a dance music mix to stand on a dodgy groove. It's what you dance to. You have to have this right. Ask yourself, can you feel it? Now what I want you to do is, I want you to pop on some headphones. Turn up the volume, not too loud. Close your eyes. Picture yourself in a club. And listen. And while you're listening... Ask yourself, can you feel it? Well, we can certainly feel that, so, so we're going to go ahead and say that that groove is definite and we're going to move on. Now, as we did with the bass, we have no intention of just diving in with no idea on what type of timbre we're going to use for, for a lead. 
And in fact, we've just actually spent a good 30 minutes pondering about what type of, of timbre would fit in with this mix. If I'm honest, we couldn't really agree. John suggested a sore lead that's typical of trance, and I, I thought more of a stabby lead. So the end result is we're going to go for both. Um, we'll, have, we'll have the typical trance pluck lead, um, like Paul Van Dyke, and we're also going to have a, a typical sore trancey lead as well. We will be able to fit both in this because what we plan on doing is we use the saw lead as the main lead in the uplift of the arrangement and we can use the pluck lead as the build up to that main. For this session we're going to look at the pluck type lead and provided we don't come up with another idea between now and a few sessions down the line we'll introduce the bright saw type trance lead later. Now you're probably asking why we're leaving the main lead until later and not working on it now. After all, it, it will be the most vitally important part of the mix next to the groove. Well, yes it will be, but if we begin to program the so-called largest lead timbre now, we're just going to head for disaster. The thing is with trance, many imagine that the trance lead is the biggest, most in-your-face part of the mix and, and therefore it's very easy to get carried away by stacking 10 synths on top of one another to produce this, this huge mind-blowing timbre. But the fact is that the typical trance lead isn't as large as you imagine it is, and the real presence that it has comes from the actual mix down and not the programming side. It's all down to creating a perspective within the mix. Yeah, as Rick's um, touched on, um, so, sometimes it's good to look at things in an opposite way. Um, as opposed to thinking bigger is bigger, try thinking along the lines of making certain parts appear bigger by reducing the size of other parts around it. Uh, start thinking in terms of balance. After all, there's only so much headroom for your tune or mix. As we did with the bass, um, I don't have an exact idea of how this, this plucky timbre should sound, um, just an idea that it should be plucky. Um, I suppose similar in some respects to the one used often by Paul Van Dyke, although for obvious reasons I'm not going to emulate his timbre here. As I mentioned in, in the introduction, the whole point of music is to explore and express your artistic creativity, not to become a photocopier. I mean, we've had artists in the studio who can do fantastic renditions of, of Whitney Houston, Kylie Minogue. But as I always say when, when we refuse to work with them, what's the point? Why would anyone bother to buy a record of yours when they can just go out and buy the real thing? Music is about selling yourself. The public are buying into your ideas, your creativity, and that's why they buy your records. If you're just in this to emulate someone else's timbre or soul, then, to be honest, you're not going to get very far. Although generally we tend to use more than one instrument to construct a lead timbre, um, as we did with the bass, I'll advise you to limit the instruments to two or three, and then sculpt that with the filters, processes and effects to create the, the finished timbre. The reason I advise limiting the instruments is is because it's very easy to get carried away as I mentioned before. You can stack 10 synths on top of one another, have a huge lead and you can't fit anything else in the mix. Now, before we start programming this, um, I've said this in the previous session when we are programming the bass, uh, we're not going to sit here and discuss why we're tweaking each individual knob on each synthesizer we use. The fact is there just isn't room on the DVD and you should already have a good idea on how to program a synthesizer anyway. I think we'll start with the... Um, we'll go for the ES1. Um, Non-Logic users, this is, this is just a simple subtractive synthesizer that... I, li I like the characteristic of this synthesizer, it's, uh, it's good for getting a, a plucky type timbre out of so. Oh, right, right. Oh, 
we go. Let's have to close that down. And just keep turn that back up a bit.
later. Let's go back to this ES1 again. I just want to adjust this a bit further. important to stress here that that you must take your time working on uh, on lead tombras because this this will hold the track together so we have to get this spot on so so we need to take as as, as long as we need to take over it I'm afraid there's no shortcuts to uh, getting great tombras for leads
pretty close. Um, Anticipated, uh, and I'll admit it was coming close to throwing the Mac out of the bloody window there. Uh, yeah, we we're pretty happy with this tone, but it sounds okay for this particular mix. And to be honest, even if it didn't, I don't think I'd bring myself to jump back into this tone again. But with that in mind, we can move on to the next session, and uh, we can have a look at placing this this final initial idea element, which was uh, the chords. <laughs> 